Was the raid on Trump's personal attorney just a proxy move by Mueller in his fishing expedition? That's the focus of tonight's angle. Do you hear that drip, drip, drip sound? Well, those are the nonstop leaks coming from the offices of the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, which on Monday, as we know, executed that raid on the home, the work, and the temporary residence of Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen. From unnamed sources with knowledge of the investigation, we learn that the search focused on documents related to porn star Stormy Daniels, and that potential crimes may include bank and wire fraud, along with campaign finance violations. Now, yesterday, there were more leaks that investigators were scouring for information related to, and I kid you not, the Access Hollywood tapes. And a new report today in The New Yorker alleging possible payments to a Trump Tower doorman and others during the campaign. Bottom line, right now, as things are, Russian collusion seems to be a faint memory. And after all the hype about that Trump Tower meeting with Don Jr. and that Russian attorney, after all the hide-the-ball tactics that the DOJ used applying for that FISA warrant, and you think about it, after all the speculation about Trump's relationship with Russia, Mueller has come up with goose eggs. Now, Team Trump is properly worried that Mueller is just using the Southern District of New York as a proxy to do their dirty work. In other words, have the New York agents vacuum up a whole bunch of stuff in Cohen's files on the president's personal business deals, again, arguably outside the scope of the special counsel's jurisdiction, and then shoot it back over to us if it's helpful, if helpful to our cause and going after the president. That way, Mueller gets credit for initially going to Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, with the information in the first place. What do you think we should do with this, Rod? And then he gets none of the downside by being the guy who executes that search warrant against the president's personal attorney. Never happened in the history of the country before. Now, remember, last summer, President Trump said that the effort, any effort by the feds, to look into his personal finances is, mm-mm. Mueller was looking at your finances and your family's finances unrelated to Russia. Is that a red line? Would that be a breach of what his actual... I would say yes. Is? Yeah, I would say yes. Now, the whole process is totally out of control. And this is why the special counsel statute, in my mind, is unconstitutional. You think about it this way. Mueller's office resides within the executive branch. And that means, if he wants to, and if it's politically appropriate for him to do so, as the head of the executive branch, the president should be able to fire him. But if Mueller did, if Mueller did get fired by Trump for whatever reason, all hell would break loose. Firing Rod Rosenstein or Robert Mueller would provoke a constitutional firestorm. There's no question that if uh, President Trump fired Mueller, Rosenstein, or even Sessions, he would set in motion a, a constitutional crisis. This is a new level of crazy for Trump, a new level of being out of control. And they, I think, for the first time, are really petrified he is going to take that step, and then they're going to be in, a, in the midst of a constitutional crisis. Well, are you tired of the pundit echo chamber? They just keep repeating themselves each other day after day after day. There's no original thought. You know what a constitutional crisis is, my friends? When an unelected and largely unaccountable band of hyper-partisan attorneys loyal to the previous president and maybe even Hillary Clinton, they're able to spend millions of your tax dollars in search of a crime merely to undo the results of a presidential election. That's the thing that should worry us, and that's the angle.